This isn't the easiest thing for me to show you, but I value transparency over everything. This is something I struggle with every single year, and that's keeping up with my tropical fruits in the winter. I just watered these, but they have not been watered in a week and a half. And with our new setup, the light is fine. They're actually not getting burned at all from it, but the fan I have in here is so efficient, it dries everything out much faster than usual. So although this is a better setup, I'm not doing my part to staying up with everything. Now everything looks dead, but it's not. You can probably believe it at this point, but we've been here before. Uh, these plants that I have are such troopers because at least one time every winter, this happens where I'm not staying up with the maintenance and they get really dry. However, the only thing I'm really losing are um, the little pots of herbs that I put in here for the winter. The actual trees themselves, all alive, they're gonna perk back up, but what I'm gonna do today is go through, take them out, and we're actually gonna spray them for spider mites. Now, if you have a collection inside, two of your biggest things that I run to every year, making sure they're adequately watered and also fighting spider mites. Now, I'm gonna bring you over just right here for this kumquat. Now, do you see on the leaves how it looks like there's some dust? That's spider mites. And ideally what you can do, you can see it on my hand a little bit now, Ideally, you do preventative maintenance so that doesn't happen, but they do get through there. So I don't know if you remember, I actually had two kumquats in here. They did ripen fully and dried out a little bit because of everything. So I have them soak in, in water upstairs. I'll show you that later. But the reason why I know these are going to be okay is we have the dried leaves, but down here we have new leaves coming in and new branches coming in. So I'm going to pull everything out. Take all the dead stuff off, and then I have a little spider mite spray here. Uh, Greg actually put it together for me. I forget what's in there. Uh, it is organic. Everything we use is organic, but we gotta do it. I already took out our dead stuff. Uh, it's just some extra soil, but we lost. Uh, I think all the flowers I was trying to do in here. Now, <clears throat> this is a cauliflower. He's still holding on. I actually got a little cauliflower head for me. He's going to be fine. We're giving him some water. My basil's not doing well. Spider mites are getting everyone here. Most of these are citrus or citrus-like trees. Spider mites love that. So let's pull some of this stuff out and give you some close-ups. Hi, Scout. How are you doing, pretty lady? She's going to get a haircut at the end of the month, and she's going to look so nice. Unlike other long haired cats, she actually seems to be a lot more uh, comfortable and happy when she gets a lion cut compared to now. Now she's a little less active just because her fur gets in the way. And she's just checking out. Oh, this disaster. All right, so first up, I'm giving, giving the chop to Basil. It doesn't look good and I think it'll bounce back, but we have so much basil, I don't need any more fresh, so I'm gonna call this a day. But our salad burnet and parsley, that's gonna perk back up in a couple hours. This is my cherimoya, and you see how easily those leaves came off? They're done. They're not doing anything. They're not giving any more nutrients. You can see here, we have new growth coming in. That's gonna be fine. Now, these types of trees, a lot of our tropicals are on sort of the same timeline where the most activity you get from them is actually in the winter. And unfortunately, when something like this happens, uh, they take a pause. It is normal for these types of trees to have a dormancy period. It does not typically involve dropping all their leaves. This is gonna be fine. The reason why I'm taking the dead leaves off um, other than cleaning it up is because we have spider mites and spider mites will hide in those dead leaves. So I don't know if I'll have time to do it today, but all that 
leaf waste down here. That's got to come out because that's where spider mites will hide as well. Detective Scout is on the case. They both really like parsley and celery, but not, neither of those are going to harm them, but we also don't want them to eat them because I want them. Just going to pump out the spray here get the pressure going. Same though this doesn't have leaves on it, we are going to spray it as a preventative. The type of spray we have you can use with the light on, uh, but be careful because sometimes you get sprays and they need to dry before the light goes back on, otherwise it fries your plants, so perfect. This one's done. I'm going to go through the rest of these and I'll show you what it looks like once I get them all cleaned up. Here I have an Arabica coffee, and a lot of these leaves are staying on. If you're gently going through them and the leaves come off, good riddance. But if they're staying on, that means they're gonna perk back up as soon as this absorbs the water that I gave them. So, typically spider mites will leave these alone. They actually leave my herbs alone too, for the most part, except for basil. So, what I'm gonna do, with the spray is we're gonna get under the leaves, over the leaves, and on the stem. And that should help. We don't really like to spray our plants unless we need to. Now that I'm at a time where we need to spray for spider mites, uh, what I'm gonna do is get everything to die and then give it, you know, three to four days, uh, even to a week. I usually to max out about four days and we're gonna treat them again. And we're gonna keep doing that for at least two to three weeks, just to make sure, you know, any uh, eggs that are hatching, we're catching up on that, any scragglers, and uh, maybe if there's any like spots that we missed spraying, we're gonna go over them. So that's our schedule. And I have the task to go through here. This should take me and that's me like 20 30 minutes there's a lot of plants but it should be okay by the way just a disclaimer if you're spraying anything you have I don't care if your product is organic or not please wear goggles please wear gloves cover up I know I don't have it on right now um, that's just for that example for our initial um, uh, what are you, charmoya <laughs> that I sprayed, but while, while I'm doing this, I'm going to be covered up because, you know, just because the company says something is safe. I don't, you know, I like to do as much information gathering as I can, but you know, it's just good practice. Cover up when you're spraying stuff. Okay. Don't, don't think I'm here, you know, not covered up. I have some good news about my green tea plants. They are ready to up pot, which is great. They're a little dry and unhappy. So I'm gonna let them recover a little bit and then in a couple weeks, we're gonna go ahead and up pot these and maybe start getting some tea this year. Oh, look at this olive. All of that growth huh, is, uh, since I put them in here, was it September? Ooh. Actually loving it in here. That's great. Can you see that at the tip of the javel branch? We have aphids also. Let's see if you can see it here. Oh. Oh, so I don't know how well you can see it. This spray will work for aphids too, but we don't typically deal with aphid issues. But when they do, oh, let's get that focus. When they do come up, they're really gross. So we're gonna spray those too. I've mentioned this in the past, but if you're new here, welcome, first of all. Second of all, uh, Jabotacabas are a fruiting plant and they're in the rose family. So aphids will attack roses. Anyone who grows roses knows that. So when we do see aphids in here, it's typically on my Jabotacabas because they're in the rose family. Go figure, I guess they like the flavor. Poor loquat, yes. We had some root rot issues is what I'm guessing it was earlier. 
in 2022, but this one got hit really hard. Ugh. Look at that. That is really bad spider mite infestation. We're gonna take care of that. Ew. Ah, oh, they're so gross. All right, everything is cleaned up and sprayed. Yeah, we're gonna clean up in here a little bit. Got some dead leaf. Gonna toss out, and then we're gonna be spraying everything in here with the solution as well. So let's get this cleaned up. I'd like to show you these are the two little kumquats we got. They actually plumped up a little bit since being in water, so I'm gonna leave them in there. They still smell really good, but that's not bad. They got dried out, but they did come in. I got the tent cleaned up. I got all of our plants back in there, and I want to show you. Here's everything. We got the bottom cleaned up. We have all the dead leaves removed. They've been sprayed. I severely underestimated how long this would take. This actually took me an hour and a half, not 30 minutes. That's okay. Now everything is alive and it's gonna bounce back. We've been through this before. These poor trees. If I had a four season greenhouse, that would be perfect, but I do not, so. We are gonna go ahead and actually in that corner there, we're gonna put a camera so I can at least check on them throughout the week and not rely on me following a schedule. We may have one potential death is my ponderosa lemon. Poor thing, the whole top is dead. I broke it back and it looked like there might be like a little bit of green left in the stem here. It might be dead. So one casualty, I also lost my Russian sage, but my Tulsi basil is still alive. My green tea is still alive. I can get Russian sage seeds or another plant, that's fine. So I'm gonna leave everything in here and you can see our parsley and salivar nut have perked up a little bit. Because we'll be coming back here in three to four days, I'm gonna be watering them again and get on a better schedule. Uh, the spider mites, my best theory is that they got out of control because the plants were under stress because all summer no spider mite issues and they're outside they're in the sun they're getting watered so we're gonna knock that population down we're gonna get these happy not stressed I need to get some more fertilizer for everything but we're in a lot better shape than we were and I know that everything looks bad but it's gonna grow back, I assure you. And most likely will grow back in the next month. And hopefully, a little cauliflower here. Look at that little guy. Whoop. Hopefully that gets bigger. That'd be really nice. That's a snowball cauliflower. So, that's the update on all of our trees. I have some special bonus content for you. Do you remember the last time we showed you our water glass egg collection? Well, that's all we have left. Five two quart containers. Also, looks like our potatoes are starting to sprout. So we'll be going through those and cooking them up. But it's bonus food storage. You're really getting through those eggs. We're only getting one and most recently maybe two eggs a day. So our supply is down until we get more daylight hours. But the girls got us in the summer, so we're all set for a little while longer. If you have a winter garden at home, I cannot stress that you assess what your capacity for maintenance is. I've talked about this before in one of our previous YouTube videos. Uh, my capacity for maintenance hasn't been great lately. Uh, I've been open that we had some family things going on and they've since gotten better. But during that time, you know, I'm not paying attention to my trees. We weren't even home very often. So now we're getting everything back on track. It's great. And we're approaching the start of like seed starting season, which like snuck up on me. This winter is going by so fast. So thanks for checking this out. If you haven't already, follow us on Instagram. And if you wanna find us on YouTube, look up the Galaxy Gardens and subscribe and you'll get a notification every time we post a new video. I hope you have a good week and we'll talk soon.
bye